Today is going to be all about slip bobber stops uh, and what my experiences are with a few of the different ones and we'll go over pros and cons to all of them. Now this is going to be a bit of a tender subject for some guys. Um, everyone seems to have an opinion on which one is better and why they like one over the other, um, which is perfectly fine. I'm just going to go and straight up say this is just my experience with the tackle that I use and my style of fishing. Um, I will say there is no perfect bobber stop. Uh, everybody seems to trash just about all of them um, on reviews and in comments, and I will tell you that is because none of them are perfect. Um, they all have their strengths. They're all going to have their weaknesses. Uh, we'll go over those. I will start off by saying, too, that the type of tackle you're using can have a dramatic effect on your experience with different types of bobber stops, um, one of which would be the pound test of your line. Uh, the thicker the line, uh, you're going to get a different result than with thin line. So I like to use four pound quite a bit. It's just my general go-to for pan fishing and crappie fishing when I'm fishing slip bobbers. Um, that's just me. You might fish heavier line yourself. That's perfectly fine, but I'm just pointing out that this does have an effect on which ones you'll like and which ones you won't. The other thing that I do is I fish a larger spinning reel. I fish a 2000 series reel a lot. Uh, that will have, as well, a dramatic effect on which ones you like and which ones you don't, mainly because the bigger the spool of the reel, the fewer times the line has to go around your, sp your spool. And when you go to make a cast, Basically, your line will come into contact with the bobber stopper fewer times on a larger spool than it would on a smaller spool. On a little 500 series spool, that line is going to make a lot of little coils and it's going to come into contact with the bobber stopper on the spool of your reel more often. Also, the length of your rod. I like to use longer rods. Uh, a seven foot rod for me is pretty short. Uh, I like to use longer rods, um, which means that a lot of times I may not have to reel that bobber stopper all the way down into my reel. Uh, if you're using a five foot rod or a six foot rod, um, it's shorter. So if you're fishing deeper, you're going to have to reel that bobber stopper deeper into your reel. Uh, also, the size of the guides on the rod. I have some rods where some of these stoppers, like this thicker yarn, just won't work. I've got little tiny itty bitty guides on a few of my um, ultralight spinning rods and I, it just it won't go through. Um, so I've got some uh, that will, some of these little thinner plastic ones, I can actually get those through uh, the guides of some of those spinning reels or spinning rods. So it's just a lot of it comes down to the tackle you're using. So when I see guys trashing one over the other, a lot of times it could just be, you know, the, the, the setup that they had going. Um, so let's go ahead and start. So I'm actually going to be using eight pound here just so you can kind of see it. And it's a little easier for it to see on camera than four pound. And we'll start with just the one everybody uses. We'll start with this little yarn uh, stopper. Now, the reason everyone uses these is because they're pretty easy. They come pre-rigged on a little tube. Um, they're pretty cheap for a couple dollars. You can get a whole bunch of them. Um, they're also nice and soft and supple, which means they do go through most guides pretty easy. And they will also lay on your uh, spinning reel pretty easy because it's just soft yarn. So it will work on all line sizes too, which is also nice. So simply, if it can fit through this tube, you can use it. So we'll go ahead and thread it on there. Just pull the tube onto the line, grab one end of the yarn, and just simply tighten it down onto the line. And to adjust it, you can just simply slide it back and forth. Now, main weakness here, let's talk about that. They slip on you. So over time when you're fishing, these will get wet, you're casting them around, you're getting whipped through your guides, they will loosen over time, and it can be a little frustrating. One trick is when you cut these, what I do is I take both pieces here, I pull them away from the, from the line. I'm trying to watch the camera and do this at the same time. You're going to want to leave a little bit of a tag end, just enough of a tag end so that you can get in there and pull on them with your fingers. Like that. So after an hour or so of fishing, and it comes loose. I can get in here with my fingers and pull on it uh, tight again. 
main downside to that is, you know, you have more stuff hanging off there, which is just a little more for line and other things to get snagged on. Other downside is if you're ice fishing or you're fishing in the winter when it's cold or near freezing temperatures, that guy will collect ice on you. So the next thing you have to do is, of course, add a bead. And then if I can do this on the camera, there we go. And that is essentially going to be what keeps your float from falling off. And you can just slide your float on. Now let's use this one. There we go. And that is essentially what stops your float from sliding up the rest of the line. Now, this will go through relatively small guides, but like I said, I do have some spinning rods on some of my ultralights that are really, really small and that won't go through. Another downside to this is it is not reusable. So when this puppy is done, you simply just pull it off and, uh, you know, it's got, it's done. You gotta, gotta get another one. So overall though, cheap, easy, goes through the guides relatively easy sits on your reel and snags up relatively little um, there's a reason this is the most popular um, and it is because it's been around a long time and it still works now is there better stuff out there well i think there is so the next one are these little tiny stoppers they're called gizmos i believe and they have four little holes in them and these will go through uh, small guides. Now, they do have a few downsides, and first off being they're small, really small. So if you have troubles of uh, seeing or you have dexterity issues, this one might not be the one for you. But the major strength to this little guy is it doesn't move, or I'll say it doesn't move very much. Uh, so it stays put. So the downside to that yarn one that I was just showing you is they loosen up constantly, quite a bit. So, and that to me is pretty frustrating if I'm constantly have to adjust. So I first, I thought I would hate these. I saw these little things and I thought that thing looks like a pain, not going to like it. And I actually grew to like them just because they don't move. They stay put. Um, and to me, that's a big deal because I don't want to have to be adjusting this yarn every other cast some days. Um, and sometimes you get a piece of yarn, I don't know if it's the way they sit on your line or the way I tighten down the knot, but sometimes some stay put better than others and sometimes they don't. Um, so I've actually had some where I've ripped the whole thing off and started over just to get one that seats a little better. Um, so these little gizmos uh, don't move and they're also reusable. So you can take this thing off and uh, use it again. And these also do work in the ice. So with this guy, this is an awful lot of surface area for ice to sit. And eventually you'll just get up kind of a big ball of ice um, sitting on the end of that thing. This will collect very, very little ice. So it actually does work uh, pretty good in the ice. So to use them, you basically have to go up through a hole. And then you have to go down through a hole. I'm trying to do this while I'm on camera, which is proving even more difficult than when I'm off the camera, then simply pull it to where you want it. So I'll pull this up the line a little bit. Then simply do the same thing. Take the line Just weave it through. There we go. And let's see if we can zoom in here. Basically, I've just gone up and down through that. And what that means is it stays put. It still will move. You can still take it and slide it. But it, when the line's under tension, it has a lot less of an ability to move.
than that guy. And then you simply just follow the same steps, thread your bead, thread a float, There you go. Here's your little stopper. Now, I will say that there is a limitation on line size on this guy too. So if you are one to be fishing thicker line, you know, 12 pound or 10 pound, it does get tougher the thicker the line is. Even with eight pound, you know, it takes up, you know, a lot of the hole there. Um, four pounds even easier to thread because it's smaller. Um, so yeah, pros on this is it stays put a little better. It goes through small guides pretty good. It'll sit on your reel pretty nice. You can see that lots, or there's not a lot of things to be grabbing on your reel. Now, what I will say is, I did read a lot of reviews of guys saying they hate them because they snag on the reel. Every once in a while, you get one that'll have a little tag on it. You see that little tag on the end of that one? That is just when the manufacturer cut them away from the mold, I'm guessing, that it left a little sharp little tag there. Cut that off. You want it to be totally rounded like this one and smooth. You don't want that little sharp tag. That has a lot to do with snagging line right there. So I would just go in with a um, pair of my little snips and just snip, snip that off. Um, and that will help. And they are reusable too. So don't, uh, don't throw these away. You can still use them. Um, so that is really kind of the benefit to the little gizmo. So let's do another one here. So this one, I initially thought that I would hate. And I actually, I'll admit, the older I get, the lazier I get, I start using them more and more. I love them actually now. So there are these little rubber stops. And folks, it just doesn't get much easier than this. Um, they work pretty darn good. They have a lot of the benefits that the yarn and the little gizmo that I just told you um, do. It's easy like yarn. It's easy to adjust like yarn. Um, it goes through most guys pretty easy. Um, there's no size limit on the line. Uh, you don't even need a bead on a lot of style of floats. You can just use the stopper. They work in ice. They don't collect ice. Uh, only downside is they're a little bulky to be sitting on your reel, and they're a little bulky to go through small guides. And they will slip on you as you fish them throughout the day. So the more you're uh, moving these around and the line's kind of digging around in there, they will start to loosen on you. But the thing is, they're so easy. You just simply take another one, put your line through there, slide the stop on. There you go. Boom. You're in business. Um, and you can thread a bead on, so if you're fishing uh, like a, a Phil Profession Pro Series, it has a larger hole and opening with the little brass grommet there. You're going to have to use a bead on that one. But on some of these other Phil floats, if it's just the little plastic insert, you can just thread that puppy on. If I can do this while looking behind the camera. You can just thread that puppy on and boom. You're done. You don't even really need the bead. So um, I have, I'll admit, become a big fan of these little rubber stoppers. I use them for a whole bunch of other things too. Uh, a lot of times when I'm uh, Texas rigging for uh, bass down here, I'll use this as a weight stop as well. I'll peg this on the line first. I'll thread my cone head uh, weight on there, and then I'll just take this and slide this down to the cone head, and that'll keep the cone head from uh, sliding around on me. So uh, it has a lot of uses in the fishing world. Um, main downside is, you know, it's one time use when it's done, you got to rip it off. You need more of them. Um, I buy these in bulk. I'll, I'll put some links in the descriptions, uh, too, to some of these things. So you can go check them out, but I buy these on bu in bulk. I bought like a lifetime supply for, I don't know, seven, eight dollars, something like that. You do need a little bit larger guides for these to go through. Um, they still will move a tiny bit. They still will stag on the reel a little bit. Um, but really, when you're reeling anything down onto your reel, I don't care how big it is, if it's anything other than fishing line, it's going to snag a little bit. So um, for these guys that say basically all of these snag on your reel, 
Yes, they all snag on your reel. It's just, it's, it's going to be a thing you're going to have to work past. But these are round um, so that it, it helps. But these do tend to stick on your reel a little bit just because they're a little bigger. So that is the rubber stoppers. They honestly work pretty darn good. So the next thing is you can make your own. And that is Dacron backing. So you can buy this. This is actually fly line backing. You can buy this in 20 pound or 30 pound, 20 pound being thinner, 30 being a little thicker. And it's basically the same concept as this yarn here, but it's going to be less bulky. And this yarn is more of a woven material. It's kind of twisted together. Dacron is actually a braid. You can see there's kind of like a I don't know what they call those little Chinese finger traps or whatever when you were a kid. It's actually braided together. Um, what that means is as you bite down with this on with a knot, it's actually going to continue to bite down, which means it's going to move less. Um, so I've started to actually incorporate this more into uh, what I do and what I fish with just because it kind of it offers a lot of the benefits of yarn, but just better. Downside is still got to tie a knot. Um, and what that knot is, is a uni knot. So we're basically just going to make a loop like that with the backing with our standing line just hanging through it. And we're going to go through this loop. One, two, three times. That's all it takes. And just tighten down. And then you can bite down on that little guy. Same thing with the yarn that you're going to want to do with this backing. You're going to want to take it and trim it so that you leave a little bit of tag in because it, it will still come a little loose, not as bad as a yarn, but I won't say it'll never come loose. It still comes loose, but less than the yarn. And that way, I left that one a little bit big, but you just want to leave as much on there so you can get in there to, to grab it with your fingers and, and wrench down on it. Now, I did use thicker backing here. This is the 30, which means if you use 20, it's even smaller of a knot, um, which if you compare it, okay, compare it to the, the yarn here, look at that difference. Major, major difference. So what that means is it goes through small guides. Um, it's more supple, sits on the reel better. Uh, it really has all the benefits of yarn, plus kind of a few more. It actually works better than yarn. Other beautiful thing to it is you buy a spool of backing, I don't know what you get, 100 yards or something. I mean, it's essentially a lifetime supply. You could tie bobber stoppers for you and your buddies for the rest of their lives, and uh, you'll never you'll never need to buy a spool of backing ever again. Uh, it's also, uh, I should say, it will collect ice, just like yarn. It will collect less. It's less surface area, so it will collect less... Uh, ice than the traditional yarn, but it's still going to uh, collect it. It does require a knot, still loosens a bit, still snags a bit, and it is one-time use, but like I said, it's uh, better than yarn and it is good for small guides and laying on your reels. So that is the Dacron. And of course, you follow the same steps. You thread the bead, and since it's smaller, you're going to have to use a bead because uh, it's going to slip through most float openings. Get one here that I can thread pretty quick for you. There we go. And it would sit just like, like that. And you can get it in high-vis colors if for some reason you want orange or, or yellow or something like that. Um, it still moves really, really easy. Now, I have seen guys take it to another level and use braid for the same kind of thing. Um, so you can do that as well. Um, the braid gets pretty, pretty small. Um, braid is also really slippery and hard to work with, um, but I've seen guys use it. I personally haven't tried it myself. I don't really have any braid laying around here to use. Um, so I've started to use this Dacron. Um, seems to be kind of the best of all worlds if you're looking for that, that style. Now I have heard of other guys using floss, dental floss. And I'll be honest, I have not tried it yet. So just to end this video, 
we'll try a piece of floss. I don't know, we'll see. See how it sticks on this line. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna lay the lot floss on my line. Let me get everything out of the way here. I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna make a loop. I'm just gonna go through that loop. One, two, three. Oops, make sure I get it around there. There we go. You can already smell the minty freshness on this. This stuff's really potent. Bite down. Well, I can say it actually sits. I wonder if this is what a braid would look like a little bit too. It sits really small on the line. It's pretty slippery though. I can feel it slipping around. This is waxed floss. I don't know if there's a difference between waxed and unwaxed. Oh, now I bit down on it hard. Eh, I don't know. It's still pretty slippery. Like I said, I don't know if that's the the waxed or what. I don't know if guys, I saw it, some guys on the forums talking about this. I don't know if these guys, it's just what they had laying around. I don't know. Um, but, I mean, it. it's on there. But moving it, man, it moves awfully easy. Let me pull it, my pull my Dacron down to it. I don't know, the Dacron to me feels better. Dacron still feels pretty tight to me. Seems it has just the right amount of uh, grip, but also movement. Where this floss, I don't know, that moves pretty easy. So I would skip the floss. I don't know, if it was me, I don't know if I'd even try it on the river or on the, on the lakes if it was me personally. Um, like I said, maybe they're using unwaxed if they're using a different kind, but that to me feels like it's going to move all over um, compared to this, this Dacron. Uh, but, I don't know, in the comments, maybe if you guys are using floss, tell me what type of floss you're using. Waxed, unwaxed, spearmint, mint, fresh mint, I don't know. Um, just kind of let me know, I guess, am I doing something wrong there? But So that's my experience with, what did we do? We did four different ones. We did yarn. Uh, we did the little, the little gizmo. Uh, we did my, the little rubber stoppers that I actually do like and use quite a bit. And we did Dacron, which is what I've uh, started to use a lot more of on my small guides on a lot of my spinning rods. So um, those are the four that I like to use. That's my experience with them. I'm sure, you guys are all going to have a lot to say as far as which ones you like best and why. Um, feel free to leave them in the comments um, and maybe help other anglers out and... Uh, let them know what you like and why you like it. Um, hopefully that helps some of you guys and, uh, you know, helps you catch more fish out there. And don't forget, you can buy all of our custom baits on our website, moondogbaitco.com, for all your crappie and pan fishing needs. Thanks, guys.